Welcome everyone, it's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys a reading today on Your Divine Masculine. If you guys are interested in your own personalized version of this reading, go ahead and click the link at the very top in this description box. But today's reading is going to be about um, the masculine side of a connection. And so um, I do tend to channel for those that are experiencing separations or challenges in their connection. There's not necessarily a label that is necessary for this particular reading. You can be on a twin flame journey. Um, you may just, you know, see this person as a counterpart, etc. But this is going to be the masculine side. I do tend to say um, him or he for masculine and she or her for feminine. It's just the way that I channel. So just go ahead and uh, take the messages and um, apply them how they resonate for your situation. Okay. Okay. So all the decks I'll be using, I'll list them down below and I'll, I'll let you guys know what we are using as I shuffle each deck. So we are going to go into mostly masculine energy, but we're also going to go into a little bit of the feminine's energy. So we have these two organites here that are representing masculine and feminine. Okay. So anyways, you guys, let's go ahead and get started. I've had a lot of requests to do these types of readings again. And I think that at the end of the year, you know, I was just kind of taking a break from a lot of that energy but I just feel guided again. And also with, of course, a lot of the requests that I'm getting um, to just dive into these types of readings again. But I think that we can do these readings um, always remaining empowered. You know, I think that that's what I felt was being lost, you know, in the collective is that a lot of people were really just focusing or hyper focusing on another person instead of, you know, focusing and working on themselves. And so all of the readings that I bring to the table, I always like to really pull in, you know, what we can take, what we can learn and how we can empower um, ourselves through these connections. So that's really what my, um, uh, what's the word? I can't think of the word. It's just, it's really what I want for this reading. <laughs> so an intention, there you go, intention for the reading. So I'm going to go ahead and follow the outline that I have created for this particular reading. So if you guys do want it for yourselves, this is how it goes. So let's go ahead and start off this reading here with the divine masculine. So whoever the divine masculine is in your life, their current theme for growth and development right now. So kind of like what they're uh, currently working on, etc. So this deck right here is called the uh, power of surrender cards so let's see what comes up for your divine masculine for their growth and development at this time okay so we have surrender your attachment to results so there could be something right now that the masculine is working on when it comes to success, trying to make something happen. So there could be something where they're holding on too tightly to a particular outcome and it's kind of sabotaging it. You know, we all tend to do that, right? We all tend to really, you know, want to hit a goal or a mark. And so we're, you know, focus, focus, focus. And sometimes it has the opposite effect. And so it looks like the masculine right now could be working on just kind of surrendering, um, you know, particular, uh, results or surrendering something that is, uh, you know, I, I need, need, need something to happen. So there's something around that he's growing and developing in that area of letting go. We also have surrender to non-action. Okay, so I'm kind of feeling like there could be something going on either in the masculine's career or just in his life where there's a lot of non-action. So he wants something to happen. Um, he's working on something. He has a particular goal, but there's just something that seems to not be popping off. And it that's very difficult, you know, as a feminine who's actually a lot more in her masculine most of the time, so this is just me, um, this is something that I'm currently going through. There's a lot of non-action right now in my life, and it's it's really putting me into a uh, into like a, an energy of what do I do with myself. So in a way, it's like forcing me to focus on some other things. It's for, forcing me to um, really just tap into other areas of my life. So sometimes when there is no action, there's a there's a good reason for it, and I feel like this is what masculine is going through. And we have surrender to setting limits, okay? So there's something about maybe setting healthy boundaries or uh, setting either healthy boundaries with other people or this could be setting healthy boundaries with the self. Sometimes we don't take the time for self-care. All we do is work, work, work. We're not really setting healthy boundaries to you know, enjoy our lives or to um, experience the fruits of our labor. I mean, you guys have all met people like that, right? I remember my grandparents who are no longer alive, but that's very much how they were. You know, they were, um, 
just workaholics. And I mean, I'm not saying they didn't enjoy their lives, but it's like they couldn't take what they created with them. So they just ended up leaving it to their kids, which was fine. But it's just like, you know, all that hard work, all that, you know, blood, sweat and tears to not really enjoy all of it. It's just mm. so I feel like masculine right now could be going through a little bit of this needing to set healthy boundaries with himself. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into some tarot cards. This is called the urban tarot. What else do we need to know? Yeah, there's something about work. I, I, I definitely picked this up. It's more of a work thing, working on something, um, working towards success. The masculine is trying to build something, okay? There could also be other people involved in the workspace. So there could be like a, a partnership or someone that is funding the divine masculine. So there's some amount of work that is required or cooperation. And the cooperation right now is kind of like, let's just say someone is saying, you know, this is what we're, we're ultimately working on. This is the goal but there just doesn't seem to be a lot of payoff right now. So I just feel like masculine is kind of in a holding pattern in career um, or holding pattern with, he doesn't know what he's going to do next. That's what I'm seeing. And we have the eight of, what is this? The wands energy. Yeah. Eight of Wands. So Eight of Wands is movement, you guys. So the fact that we have surrendered to non-action, as in there's no action here, it's tough. Masculine could be traveling or trying to figure out where he's going to move next or what move he's going to make next. And he has a lot of energy, but I just feel like something is delayed here. So it should be going rather quickly or masculine is used to things going very quickly, um, used to getting really quick results. And that's just not happening right now. So there's a test here. There's a test in patience. There's a test in, you know, um, success or either money, um, and achievement isn't everything. So the, the masculine is having to kind of take a little bit of a breather and is being forced to, and there's a reason for this. And we have the four of, what is this cups energy? Ooh, yeah. Boredom. I'm telling you, there's something that the masculine is dissatisfied at this time, kind of bummed out. Like he might be used to luxury. He might be used to getting what he wants rather quickly. And that's just not happening right now. There's this dissatisfaction here. There's something where it's just kind of like, you know, nothing, something isn't all that it was cracked up to be. So it could be a deal, like a business deal. Maybe he made an investment or someone made an investment in him. Maybe the economy obviously has taken a hit. There's something going on that is affecting this masculine's work and um, he feels discontent. He feels bored. He feels like he wants to do something and he can't necessarily do it because there's something that is putting up a limit. There's something that's setting a limit on what the masculine can do right now. And it's causing a lot of dissatisfaction, um, a lot of boredom, a lot of restlessness, etc. So that's what masculine is going through just on a personal level. Okay. So sometimes it's just kind of nice to know where someone is at. So now let's take a look and see where is the head and heart space in relation to the feminine at this time. Okay. So let's see what that energy looks like. What is the head and heart space towards the feminine? This right here is called the divine masculine's revelations deck that I created. Let's take a look at that head space. Okay, so we have issues. My family and upbringing are a bigger factor than I realized. Goals, see, there is that goal energy here. That's where the masculine's headspace is at. So if some of you guys are either um, in a little bit of a challenge time in your connection, or there's just not a lot of movement or even communication in this connection. I do feel like this masculine is trying to work towards a better future. And we can clearly just see here that there are some challenges with that. Okay. And issues, my family and upbringing are a bigger factor than I realized. So of course this could uh, relate to some sort of unresolved or unhealed trauma on the masculine's part. Maybe his uh, family and upbringing, maybe the, the family and up, um, maybe the family uh, really sees that the masculine needs to do this and needs to do that. So that's kind of taking the forefront of his mind is what I'm seeing here. 
And we have contemplation. I need more time to figure things out. So this is going to resonate for some of you that if your masculine has had a conversation with you that he needs to get his life together, that he has certain things that he needs to figure out before you know he can be with you or commit to you, I'm getting here that that's definitely coming through this reading, okay, for sure. So let's continue on this headspace. Let's go into my Twin Flame Journey Oracle. We're actually going to break it down. I feel like doing that. So we're going to focus just on those issues. My family and upbringing are a bigger factor than I realized. And we have paused. Yeah. So there's a need to put things on hold. I'm also getting too that um, this masculine's mental space, because it's so preoccupied with succeeding right now, or what the family thinks, or what the family expects from him, um, that he's going to put this connection with you, Divine Feminine, on hold. I am seeing that. So let's go ahead and go into my Twin Flame Journey Tarot. Yeah. We've got the world. It's almost like until he completes this cycle with himself or in his world, um, it's very difficult for him to start fresh and start new. There's some unfinished business. Uh, world is also um, ruled by the planet Saturn, and Saturn is burden. Saturn is um, hardships. So I do feel like right now the masculine's issues are a burden on him, and so of course it does put a burden on the connection, and that's why he's putting it on hold at this present time if that's the story okay so let's see what else um the second one was goals okay so i'm working towards a better future let's see what we need to know here yeah, dark night of the soul. So there's like this shadow, there's this blockage right now with masculine um, when it comes to even being able to see that light at the end of the tunnel with a connection with feminine. So that just seems to be the, um, the space right now. Seems to just be the space. And we have the queen of wands. But the thing is, it's not necessarily a personal thing on feminine. The feminine, he's very attracted to her. Um, he likes her com her confidence. He really respects her confidence. So what I'm getting from masculine right now is that if you right now are in a uh, separation or even no contact, remain confident feminine. Um, don't lose yourself. Don't chase this masculine. Um, give him space and time. That doesn't mean you're putting your life on hold or anything like that, but the, the masculine is going to respect you more, the more that you value yourself because the queen of wands is very confident. She's not chasing anything. She's allowing things to come to her. So allow the masculine to come to you. You don't need to chase the masculine. I'm getting here. He really respects this. He's very attracted to that. He's just either not ready or just, you know, at this time in his life, just can't get it together. Okay. That just seems to be the story. So let's go ahead and go into the next one. We have contemplation. I need more time to figure things out. So mentally, that's where the masculine is at. I need more time to figure things out. Well, we have divine feminine. So he has the divine feminine in mind when he is saying this, when he is thinking this, okay? So he's thinking about this. He's contemplating on the connection with the divine feminine, but he needs more time and space. And we have the Knight of Pentacles. So that Knight of Pentacles energy here is uh, very slow. You can see the snail. <laughs> the snail's barely moving. So that's just where the masculine is at right now. Um, he's making progress, but it's it's very slow. It's very steady. And this is something where it's going to require a lot of patience on the Divine Feminine. Um, you know, and, and when I say patience, again, she's not just putting her life on hold, waiting for this you know person um, or this masculine to come back and, and complete her. No, she's complete on her own. Okay. This is the empowering part of my readings here. Okay. You are complete on your own divine feminine. You do not need this divine masculine to be complete in this life. Wouldn't it be nice for the two of you to come together and compliment each other? Absolutely. But you are your own person here in this lifetime. You have a purpose. You have a mission. You do not need this masculine in order to uh, start on your mission or to do what you came here to do. You know, if the two of you can come together and compliment each other again, that's a beautiful thing. But, you know, we have free will, of course you do, the masculine does. And if, if uh, the universe sees it fit, then this will, this will simply happen. But, but people need to do the work in order to ascend to this type of connection, you know? So 
we're just checking in just to kind of see where things simply are. So that's where the masculine's headspace is at. He needs some time. He needs some space. And some of you might even be saying, you know what? I've heard this a million freaking times. Hey, we're just doing an energy check-in. I can't control the cards. So let's go ahead and go into the heart space of this masculine. Where is the heart space of this masculine? Heart space, judgments. I care too much about what others think right now. And you know what? I already got this with the family, either family or friends. There is some kind of upbringing, some sort of judgment. There's something that the masculine is, his family or his friends see him in a certain light. And that is huge on him. That's hanging on his shoulders. It's very heavy. That's what I'm seeing here. It's very heavy. And so it affects how he feels. It affects how he is opening his heart space up to the divine feminine. <clears throat> yep. Apprehensive. I don't know if I'm cut out for this. So it causes him to doubt. It causes him to want to hide. So it kind of hides how he feels divine feminine, but we do have influence. You've affected my life significantly. So just your influence, just you meeting, coming together has influenced this masculine in a very powerful and significant way. So you have had some sort of effect on him, divine feminine. It's not that he's just met you and it's out of sight, out of mind, going to forget all about you. No, you have some sort of influence over him. So he always has you in a, in a way in the back of his mind or in his heart space. You don't necessarily go away just because things are, aren't working out or that he needs space and time. So let's go ahead and see what else. Yep. There's that family energy. Okay. Well, first off, I'm getting here. He does feel a connection with you. It feels very familiar to him. You feel like family to him. Um, it's like this feeling of being at home, coming home. I do feel that, but I'm also seeing here that this masculine is saying that my family and my upbringing, um, that I care about what they think and what they think right now doesn't include me either being with you specifically or just being in a relationship. It requires me to be, uh, it could even be with someone else, or it could even be, it's requiring me to, um, reach a certain status or level of success in my life. So let's see what else. Okay, eight of cups. So the eight of cups is evolving, walking away, going off on one's own to find themselves. So I just feel like this is where masculine is at right now. He may have walked away from feminine or feminine could have walked away from them or him. Um, but this is all for evolutionary purposes. So there's going to be some sort of, um, you know, evolving that takes place in the separation. So it's not for nothing. You guys, it's not for nothing. Um, and, uh, that's just, just, just where it's at. And if you guys are meant to come back together, it simply will be. But we have shadow work. So we not only had the dark night of the soul in the mental space, now we kind of have this in the heart space too. There's a shadow. There's some sort of fear that, that makes the this masculine feel apprehensive, like he's just not sure he can do this. Okay? So there's something that causes him to feel very vulnerable, very afraid, very just, just vulnerable. That's just what I'm getting. three of cups. So to me, it's like, I just keep it casual. I just keep it casual for now. I'm just spending time with my community. I'm keeping not necessarily my options open because I feel like this masculine is kind of closed off to intimacy. I do. The three of cups to me is a very casual um, encounter. It's just either casual hookups, not to say this masculine is hooking up, but if he is, it's just keeping things light um, and spending a lot of time in a social atmosphere right? Kind of hiding himself in maybe overindulging, maybe even drinking or, or doing other things. So there's something that it's like putting off or hiding from what we really fear by busying ourselves with other things. So I just feel like that is what's happening right now. Okay. That is what's happening. So let's see the influence. You've affected my life significantly. Yeah. This connection commitment. We have this connection, this commitment, whatever you've experienced with this masculine so far, it has affected him greatly. It also brings up commitment issues for him. It does. It brings up major commitment issues. Can he do this? This is like the ultimate intimacy, the ultimate connection here for him that he has been affected by. Sorry, I got cats jumping around. Yeah, Ten of Cups, look at that. Contentment and joy. So, I mean, to see these two cards together, this commitment and the Ten of Cups, I mean, you influence his life in such a way to where 
it's, it's almost like he knows that this is the ultimate, the ultimate love, the ultimate connection, the ultimate joy, the ultimate happiness that would lead to this 10 of cups life. It's like, you're a part of that, but that scares the hell out of him at the same time. So that's just what I'm seeing here for him at this point. But he feels like you guys have this connection with this family card. He feels like maybe eventually the two of you will come together, but he's also very apprehensive about it as well. So I feel like he's got he's got more of his foot out of the connection at this time, but his heart space clearly shows that he has been affected by this connection. He's been affected by what you've brought to the table, divine feminine, and he's not going to forget that. Okay. He's not going to forget that. So now let's go ahead and take a look and see. I just want to make sure I'm not. Okay, cool. I, I thought that the camera's going in and out of focus. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see what are the um, masculine's current fears, which I feel like a lot of them already came up, but what are his desires as well? So we're going to go ahead and go into the twin flame journey shadows that I created. Shadows and also desire. So we have embarrassment. What is that about? We have manipulation. Getting a story here that this masculine is embarrassed by something that he did, which was a complete and total sellout move. The sellout to me would be, you know, instead of choosing to be authentic to your own feelings and your own desires, you sell out to what your family wants for you. You sell out to what your friends think. That's what I'm getting here. There's been a, it's almost like the masculine allowed his friends or his family to um, manipulate him into thinking that either you weren't what he was looking for, or um, may, it might not have anything to do with you. It may just be the type of person um, that they felt that the masculine should be with. And maybe he's, there's something about you in your life that just, he, he either feels or knows that his family isn't going to accept. I'm getting that for some of you, not all of you. I'm also getting sold out to uh, being very manipulative and not being truthful and honest with you, divine feminine, you know, and just kind of, but it's just this embarrassment. So th there's this leftover shadow of guilt and shame of acting a certain way in, in whatever went down with the two of you. So this is my tw uh, dark night of the soul tarot. We already know that your masculine is kind of going through a dark night of the soul. So I feel like this is really going to tell us a lot about that. Oh, ten of Rage, boiling point. So the Ten of Rage is the Ten of Wands. So to me, there's definitely this feeling of that something has happened here. There's been a there's been a completion. There's been an ending here. Something reached a boiling point, and it could even be that this masculine did certain things that caused this boiling point for you. But I'm also receiving too that this masculine could have um, been super stressed, and, and this is not an excuse, but super stressed and super um, just like didn't know how to act or didn't know how. How to deal with this. And so he could have like, um, said some things to you. He could have acted in a way that was super embarrassing, manipulating you into thinking that something was wrong with you. And really everything was wrong with him. That's what I'm getting here. And it's not about the blame game. It's just, that's what people do. They, they do a transference. They, they project whatever's going on with them. They tend to project outside of themselves if they don't want to deal with it. So it's like they end up blaming you or they end up telling you that there's something about you that they just don't like. And it's instead of taking responsibility for how they really feel. So I, I just, I'm getting the sense that this may have happened or you could have reached a boiling point and you know, somebody treats you a certain way and you're just like, I'm out enough is enough pushing you to that point. Yeah. Four of, uh, swords for torment washed up. So what's the four swords? We go into silent mode. We withdraw. And I'm just seeing that that's really what this was all about, Divine Feminine. The masculine just needed some space. He needed some time. He needed time to go within. And so if he felt like he didn't know how to uh, communicate that, or maybe he felt like he couldn't get that with you, I just feel like he just may have forced your hand in this matter, right? Created a diversion, created a problem. But at the end of the day, I just feel like this masculine feels washed up. He feels like he's just not good enough for you. He feels like he's not good enough for anybody. Again, I just don't know if I'm cut out for this. We saw those words. I just feel like a loser. I just feel like I just am not good for anybody. That's what it is. I'm just not good for anyone. Yeah. Let's see. Like selling out to that fear, selling out to that belief that he's not good enough. 
Yeah. There's a lot of torment that this masculine feels in his, in his uh, mind, mental space, for sure. Because remember, that's where the dark knight even came up was in the mental space. But we have Stonewall. Stonewall means like there's just no talking to, to this person. Oh, interesting. 10 and then four plus six, 10, 10, 10. So again, this to me is just, it's like the, you, you've hit the end of the road for now. Um, things c can't really push past this point at this, at this moment. Um, we might be able to get somewhere at a later date, but it may be that we need to just kind of let this masculine be, um, because he may not be in the, uh, in that mental space to be able to communicate. Right. But again, this is really about what's going on with masculine and feminine. It's not really personally against you. So I'm hoping that there's a little bit of understanding there. So that makes it a little bit easier to kind of not take it so personally because it's hard. It's hard not to take things personally when people do stuff. I mean, there's certain actions that I've taken against people. It has nothing to do with them. It has everything to do with me, but they might feel like it's them, but it really isn't. It's me, you know, so I can understand this energy. What we do is really, what other people do is really none of our business. It, it, it really isn't even personal. It's just about how they're coping or their inability to speak or to articulate how they're feeling or whatever. So this to me, Six of Swords, there's a distance here. Six of Swords is distance. Six of Swords is kind of being in this choppy water and not being able to get out. So we we're not really going to get anywhere as long as we're in this rocky waves in this boat, right? We're just going to be seasick at this point. So stone wall means that somebody is just putting up a wall and they're, you know, you can throw anything you want at them. You can say things to them. You can try to reason with them. You can yell at them. You can, you know, express yourself emotionally. There's a little effect that it's going to have on the person that's in this, in this energy. Okay. Again, it doesn't mean that the masculine doesn't care. It just means that whatever he's going through, his shadow is outweighing his light right now. And he's selling out to the shadow. He's selling out to this fear. He's selling out to either this rage or this anger or what's ever going on with him. And that is causing him to feel like he wants to hang his head low and he wants to withdraw and not really participate with anything except for maybe his work and success, right? So again, you guys just take this if it resonates because it may not be your story and that's okay. Your story doesn't have to come through every single week. So now we're going to go into the desires. What does this masculine truly desire on a deep level that maybe he's just even hiding from himself? We're going to go into the twin flame hunger vampire edition by fire, Witch tarot. What is this masculine truly desiring deep down or what is his true hidden, hidden energy? I will hunt you down. Interesting. So to me, this is telling me divine feminine that when your masculine is ready, he will come for you. So this is another confirmation to remain in the queen of wands energy. The queen of wands energy is very confident. She's not chasing the masculine. This masculine also wants to pursue the feminine. And, and I'm not saying that this is most um, masculines, but you know, there is something about masculine energy that's more apt to want to pursue, to want to chase, to want to, you know, deal with competition. You know, that that's just a more of a masculine quality. It doesn't have to be for everyone, but I feel like it's only natural that this masculine wants to pursue the feminine, not the other way around. And it doesn't mean that you can't be yourself or reach out or anything like that. And it's not about playing a game. If you feel like you have to play a game with someone or you can't be yourself with this person, th th then, then this may be something else. Th this may not be what you think it is, you know? But eventually, if you can just be yourself and be raw and authentic, um, you know, and, and two people come together and they complement each other beautifully, you know, that, that's a true divine partnership. That's a true divine counterpart. And all this other stuff that you guys are going through right now, these are just challenges and growth and ascension that's taking place in order to get to that point. We're, we're not just overnight to that point with people. It took Mr. Moon and I a very long time, even when we came back together, um, to get on the same page, to complement each other well. Things take time, right? Things take time. And so that's what I'm seeing here is that this masculine deep down inside um, is basically saying here that he will come for the feminine when he is ready. But it's not about her putting her life on hold and waiting until he comes back. No, she is still the queen of wands and queen of wands kicks ass 
and she takes names and she does her thing and she's confident and living her best freaking life. So that's the kind of queen of, of, of wands that we're talking about here. We have sexual baptism. Okay, so this is what I'm getting from this. This masculine, and, and not all of you may have been intimate in this way. So to me, this is just intimacy, period, coming together. Whether there was this involved or not, it doesn't matter. But baptism is, is renewal. Baptism is, it is an extraordinary experience. You, you feel um, just completely connected. There, there is something magical that takes place. So I do feel like this is masculine's way of letting feminine know that there is no one that compares to her in this way. Um, there is something very strong. There's a magnetic chemistry that he has not been able to and will not be able to duplicate with another person. So deep down, there it is, whether he wants to face that or not. And we have in a ruthless phase. And this makes sense to me because I really feel like this ruthless phase is the stone wall. So some of you guys might be listening to these messages and going, this sounds great, but he's been very uh, cold and distant. When I text him, he, he, he refuses to speak to me or he's ghosted me or he's blocked me on social media. Look, there's tons of people out there that I care about where either they're blocked on social media or they've blocked me. So that doesn't mean shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's just how people uh, process things. It's just how people deal with what they can't deal with in that moment or what they have to do in order to uh, protect themselves or something. So this is a, but it's still, it feels ruthless. It's not kind. It, it sucks. But this masculine very much is in this phase where he may not be kind or loving or embrace the feminine if she comes for him. So <clears throat> this is a warning in a way for the feminine to just kind of respect the masculine space and give him time to figure out whatever he needs to figure out. I appreciate it when people give me time and space because I usually come to a very, um, if I'm angry or if I feel a certain way, I, I usually will get calm and I will start to see things in a new perspective. And then when I'm ready, it's like, okay, you know, um, I think that this, this is something that, that, that we can work out. It takes time though to get there, right? It doesn't happen. It usually exasperates. Is that the right word? The situation when you're pushing, 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 and pushing. If someone's pushing me, I'm like, I'm blocking you. I'm done. I'm out. I can't handle it. It's too much. So that's what I'm saying is I, I really identify more, more with the masculine side of things most of the time. And sometimes I'm in my feminine. But this right here to me is a masculine who's just kind of putting, putting up a wall and, and, and saying, please don't push right now. You know, please don't push. I will come for you when I'm ready. I want you to trust me on this. I'm <laughs> look at that. I want you to trust me on this. This is how I need it. This is what I want. And it's not about the masculine getting everything that he wants. So if you feel that feminine, if you feel like you're jumping through hoops to make sure that the masculine is okay and that he's getting everything that he wants and that you're very sensitive to his needs, but he's not giving that back to you, that is something that you need to examine within yourself. That's something that you need to change and heal within yourself, okay? So when we feel aggravated with the way that we're doing or the way that someone is acting or responding to us, that's more about us. Why are you doing that then? Are we doing something to give? Is there a condition with this love and light and healing and everything that you're sending to this masculine? So if you're feeling resentful or irritated, that is something to work on within yourself, okay? But trust me when I say this, that this masculine needs feminine to be the queen of wands. That right there is going to work more in your favor than being, let's just say, the queen of cups reversed, which is somebody who is, you know, projecting all of their dependencies on this masculine, this, this a feminine that needs her masculine or she's going to die. That's not the kind of feminine that this masculine needs. And it's not to say, oh, well, he's all perfect and the feminine needs to work on everything. Absolutely not. I'm just giving to you guys straight. That's what I'm seeing in this reading. So deep down, that's what we got. All right. And on the bottom of the deck, I have a little goes a long way. Less is more. I just got that. Less is more for this masculine. Less is more. So um, that's, that's what we got. So now we're going to go ahead and go into the uh, masculine and feminine, their, their frequency, their vibration right now. So where feminine's at, where masculine's at, all of that. 
I like to kind of do a little bit of a side by side. So this is Divine Feminine Healing cards that I created. Feminine's energy here at this particular time in relation to this connection. I love this. This to me is Queen of Wands all the way. She is very much in her goals to create some sort of um, you know forward movement on her dreams. It says, I must co-create with spirit in order to bring my goals to fruition. To me, this is also telling me that this feminine knows that right now her masculine may not be able to participate with her in this mission or this purpose. So guess what? She's gonna go ahead and do her own thing in the meantime. Fantastic. And if they end up, you know, on the same page later on, then that's a beautiful blessing. But she's not going to put her life on hold and she's not going to say, oh shit, I can't do what I need to do because my counterpart isn't by my side. Screw that. Energetically work with the energy. You know, that's what, that's for me, that's what separation is all about. It's learning to just trust and you feel connected to this masculine anyways. Use that higher vibrational energy that you connect with this masculine to co-create your dreams. And that's spirit. Everything is in spirit right now. Okay. So these two decks are the um, Untold Truths of the Heart Oracle and the Secrets of a Lover's Journey by Aqua Moonlight. So let's see what we need to know where feminine is at. So we're going to get a red card and we're going to get a black card. Okay, so I um, uplifting connections. I love this because she's going to use the connection in spirit with masculine to uplift her. She's not gonna focus on either a 3D situation right now, which could be grief, sorrow, pain, there's so much. You know, masculine did this, we're in separation, it's so sad. She's not focusing on that. That's not Queen of Wands, guys. The Queen of Wands, she is just in a, she's in a whole new, she's in another universe, man. She's in another plane. And she's utilizing all of this to uplift her on her journey, not focus on everything that she's lost or everything that's that's sad on this journey, okay? And she's also connecting with other people. She's connecting with other people to co-create what she came here to ultimately do, her divine purpose, her divine mission. That's what I'm seeing here. So let's go ahead and go into this uh, psychic heart tarot. Okay, so we have the world embrace. I'm getting here with this reversed um, energy, even though this door right now might seem to be closed and that her and the masculine have a lot of unfinished business, she's not worried about it. She's still going to embrace her goals. She's still going to embrace what she came here to do. She's not going to allow this energy to supersede her life. She is going to focus on the higher vibrations of this connection. She's going to focus on the higher vibrations of life, and she's going to ride this higher vibration to make all of her dreams come true with or without her masculine. Fantastic. I love to see this for the divine feminine. It's super empowering. So feminines, that's you right now. You are the queen of wands all the way. Let's see where this masculine is at. We're going to go into my twin flame journey messages, volume two, and see where this masculine is at. Oh my God. Okay. So what's crazy, you guys, is that the first deck that I use, Divine Masculine Revelations, it's a combination of my Twin Flame Journey Messages 1 and 2. I just recreated this deck with images. This card already came up. It's just a confirmation that out of 54 cards, and I'm only pulling one for Masculine, this card came out. My family and upbringing are a bigger factor than I realized. It came up at the very beginning of the reading. So this is a huge factor for Masculine huge factor. But also it's not about just what his family thinks or his friends think. It's his upbringing, how he was raised, what he was exposed to. So there could be some real traumas that are unhealed that, that really affect this masculine on a deep level to this day. And that might be why he is so closed off. This might be one of the reasons why it's difficult for him to open himself up. He doesn't know if he's cut out for this kind of connection. It might be just too, too triggering for him. Dreams coming true. And letting go. Wow. So remember the eight of cups? I feel, <laughs> 
you know, it's not a, it's not to create a fantasy scenario, but I just have to give it to you how it's coming to me. You guys, you and this masculine vibrationally came together. It was a dream freaking come true. Okay. It was bliss. It was absolute bliss. You and this masculine, I mean, if you physically tied and came together in a physical body way, it was out of this world unreal but this masculine still walked away. This masculine still had to release it. It was too much. I'm also getting though on an, on the same note that this masculine had certain dreams carved out for him, whether it was what his family wanted or what he always envisioned that he was going to end up like, you know, he was going to end up owning his own company or whatever this is, a certain level of success. And that really seems to be where his vibration is currently at is letting go of anything that doesn't include him reaching that pinnacle of success, which would include you divine feminine. That's what I'm seeing too. So there's a couple of different messages there. Let's get a tarot. This is the psychic tarot and Oracle deck. Just one card. Okay, there's this uh, this card here, which is temperance, patience. So to me, um, it's also about healing, though, and it's also about reconciliation, divine timing, all of it, all of the above. So I just feel like right now, the timing of when the two of you will reconcile, when the two of you will come back together, when this healing will occur for the masculine, it's kind of hanging in the balance, right? It's kind of preventing this coming back together, this this reconciliation at this time. But I have on the bottom of the deck, the emperor in the upright position, which is divine masculine. This is somebody who is gaining control and authority over his life. So I feel like that's the main goal right now. Once this is accomplished, this masculine may feel more confident to show up as a divine masculine in the feminine's life. Okay. But it's just, unfortunately at this time, it just seems like there's a lot more shadow than light. And that's what masculine is working through. But guess what feminine? I mean, you are all about the light. You're embracing it for the both of you is what I'm seeing here. You're growing, you're creating your dreams. I love it. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see what is the masculine's higher self message to the feminine right now. And even though we've kind of gone into a lot of that already, I just wanted to set a particular category for that. What's the most important thing that masculine wants feminine to know at this time? This is called the, I don't know. It's an Oracle deck, like a fairy's Oracle deck by Lucy Cavendish. Touch exchange connection. <laughs> well, okay. I do feel like masculine is telling feminine in this message here that um, he plans to invite her back in and to connect with her and exchange energies with her when he is ready. The touch, the exchange between the two of them was just too powerful and too magnetic for him to stay away from forever. So at some point, I feel he will desire to want to be with you again, to touch you once again, to exchange energies, whether it's just a conversation, to connect connect with you once again, divine feminine. So this is my twin flame journey messages. Number one. Oh my gosh. Wow. I can still feel you. That's what masculine wants you to know. Feminine right now is that he still feels your touch. He can still feel you in his, he feels you in his energy field. So if you feel him, he feels you. Wow. That's crazy. What else? And we have cry, mourning for something sacred, which seems lost. We know that the masculine sees this connection as sacred, as very special. Remember that baptism energy? He sees it as very sacred, but he's lost this. Um, he either lost you because of his own actions. There Obviously, something could have happened where you stepped away from him. Whatever has happened here. I do feel like this masculine has cried, you know? He has cried for this feminine. I just, he cried. Wow. I just wasn't ready for you. So to me, this is like at the time when feminine masculine came together, it was just so intense. It was so out, out of this world. Amazing. Uh, but it, it just was too intense. And so he had, it just, he just wasn't ready for her. So that was it. So he lost he lost her, he let her go, um, or his actions, you know, caused him to lose her. 
And uh, he's definitely mourned. He's mourned this loss, Divine Feminine, and that's what he wants you to know. Wow. All right. What else? We have Secret Doorway. Um, this is kind of cool because I feel like this masculine is actually working with his intuition. He's working with meditation. He's going within, secretly communicating with her, secretly um, wants to open up um, a door, um, may not be doing it in the physical world, but there's something that he's doing in his mind. He's using his mind, second sight. He's not using his eyes. He's not physically opening a door with feminine. It's in secret. It's... It's uh, something she may not be aware of that he's doing to connect with her. I don't know how I feel anymore. Yeah, so while he's in this phase of not sh not being sure um, what he can provide or what he can do at this time or how he feels, him trying to work it all out, this is where he's just choosing to, this is how he's choosing to connect with feminine in a secret way. He's choosing to, to, to connect with her in a way where maybe she's unaware of it or there could be someone else that he needs to hide it from. That's for some. That is for some of you. What else? There's definitely a connection here, though. Definitely a connection. I mean, I feel like he's still in love with this feminine. I do. I feel like this feminine or this masculine is still in love with the feminine. Would you reject me? I feel like when it comes to actually courting her again and coming back, he will, he will be afraid. He will have fear that she will reject him. So that could also prevent masculine from um, coming towards her because he fears that she will reject him. And we have snail's pace, and that's kind of interesting because that already came up for masculine Knight of Pentacles energy in, in the um, Twin Flame Tarot deck, which was the snail paced energy. So there it is. So he's in a snail's pace. So it's like, instead of quickly acting on his emotions or acting on his desires, he slows down into this very like, ah, uh, you know, maybe I'll just wait. I'll just wait. Subtle energies. I don't want to spook you. I don't want to scare you. I'm also very afraid myself. So I feel like this is telling us, Divine Feminine, that your masculine has a lot of these feelings deep down, um, but may not be acting on it out of fear. And so instead, he's just kind of subtly dealing with this instead of trying to come towards you and make something happen. So you're just dealing with a masculine who's very, very particular, not particular, very, um, very guarded and very methodical with his movements. Some of you guys could be dealing with the Virgo. That's Virgo energy there. Yeah, there's something there. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is we're going to see what your angels and your guides want you to know right now and how they're helping to assist with this connection. We're going to go into my Twin Flame Angel Numbers cards. 945. Oh, see? Step into your senses. Oh my God, Divine Feminines. This is crazy because this is this card right here. Your guides and your angels are actually telling you to step into your senses because that's where you and the masculine are actually communicating and connecting on some, on some intimate level. <laughs> so step into that. Um, if you feel disconnected from masculine, you know, do a meditation, um, you know, call him, call him out in your mind, connect with him in your mind to let, you know, telepathically communicate in that way. There's, there's something here. There's a door that is still open. There's a doorway that's open to communicate. So utilize this. Wow. That is, I'm blown away. That's so freaking cool. That is freaking cool. Okay. And we have eight to eight, another 10. To me, this is tense. Eight plus two is 10. Two plus eight is 10, 10. Karmic justice will be served for the highest good of all parties involved. So what is car karma? Karma is cause and effect. What we put out there, you know, it, 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 there's a balancing that happens in the universe, right? And it doesn't have to be good or bad. It just is. It's just energy. It's just action. So there's some sort of justice, some sort of balancing of um, karma that's going to be served for the highest good of all parties involved. So sometimes that karma can be unpleasant. Sometimes that karma can be very, very pleasant. But right now it's being served 
at a level of being for the highest good for everyone involved. So everybody wins really when this card comes through. So it's almost like your guides and your angels are telling you, you know, really, really try not to focus too much on when something's going to happen or if something's going to happen. Just really, really have faith that it will in time. And we have 2020. Well, of course, the year 2020 was a couple years ago now. So there could have been something that really happened significantly significantly in 2020. And that could be this karmic justice, like you're still waiting for this balancing of this karma. Or you're still waiting for a karmic situation to resolve. But it says, remain optimistic about your connection. Your true heart's desire is on the horizon. So your spirit guides are telling you to remain optimistic. Now, again, remaining optimistic isn't sitting around waiting for someone to return. No, it means that you are still taking care of you and focusing on yourself and being the best version that you can be of you. That is high vibe. That is forward moving. That is evolution. Okay. I just want to make that clear. So this right here is called the angel wisdom tarot. I just couldn't think for a second. I have too many decks. All right. Let's see what else we need to know. Oh, the king of cups. So the King of Cups says trustworthy, honorable, and I like this because the ship means that this is something that is coming in. So something is on the horizon, the ship of this masculine being in his heart space once again, being able to be honorable with his words, devoted is on the horizon. So this is some, this, this is actually a possibility that this masculine will grow, that this masculine one day will be able to be in his heart space and to be vulnerable towards the feminine. Okay. But we also have a couple of words, key words that are bringing me information. This masculine hides his feelings, but he's well-intentioned, okay? He's not hiding to hurt the feminine. He's not hiding because he, he doesn't feel these things. He does feel these things for feminine. He does. But he's just not mature and healed enough at this time to be able to be the king of cups for her. A lot of a lot of fear still. See this unfounded fear. Nine of Swords. So masculine is got that dark night of the soul that he's got to get through. He's got these anxieties and these worries and these. It's like it's the stories that we're telling ourselves. That's Nine of Swords. It's the narrative that we have running in our heads. So there needs to be some time and space that masculine needs in order to um, you know work that work these fears out. I don't know why the camera's crooked. And we have six of cups, which is reconciliation. So to me, um, this is also saying that this reconciliation is, is, is a possibility. And, and we did get that with that temperance, but it was in the reverse position for masculine. That's the angel of reconciliation to me. These two people coming back together, reclaiming what they once were building in the past. That's it. Six of cups. So reconciliation, I feel, is a possibility for whoever's watching this video with your masculine. Um, you know, but again, there are some things that are going to need to be gone through. There's some fears. There's some belief systems that need to be shifted and changed. So all of that takes time. But again, keep doing you. Keep evolving. Keep empowering yourselves. Keep in that queen of wands energy divine feminines so the last messages are going to just be future energy okay where are things headed moving forward so this deck is kind of interesting it's called the um oh my gosh i forget what this 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 deck is called it's like got two sides to it so we're just going to go ahead and shuffle the cards and we're just going to see what side wants to come through i think it's called the um I don't remember. I'll put it down below, which is where I put everything down below. Let's see the forward movement energies here in this connection. What is on the horizon for this connection? So I'm going to pull it and then flip it like this. Okay. All right. So that is the four of pentacles. So the four of pentacles you can see on this, he's facing forward. This one has got his back turned. So to me, this is, this is uh, probably this connection still being somewhat stuck. It's still people... Um, holding on to the connection. So the connection hasn't gone anywhere. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, but people are still kind of being stubborn and not 
um, able or willing to see, uh, you know, a solution at that time. So I feel like moving forward, there's still going to be a little bit of the stuck energy. There's still going to be a little bit of hanging on to things and, and not um, being, being willing to kind of let go of certain belief systems or fears. So I see that. All right, what else? Okay, so we have a lot of backs churned here. So this is the three of wands. So the three of wands, of course, is seeing something on the horizon. Okay. And this person does see something on the horizon, but it's still off in the distance. So I just feel like a reconciliation or any kind of forward movement um, or union with this particular masculine, it's still out there. It's still a possibility, but there's still some things that need to be faced. Okay. What else? Because we have the world energy and the world actually came up for, I think it was feminine, but I feel like it came up for masculine too. I can't remember where, but it's come up two times in this reading. There is a completion of a cycle here and it is in the upright position. So to me, this tells me here that we are successfully completing a cycle. We're successfully opening up a new door. So this is all possible. Um, karmic justice, karmic um, clearing is, is happening as well with that Saturn energy. So something is evolving here. Something is able to move forward into the next phase, but it's just gonna take some time. And this right here is the death card. This is a positive aspect of the, the death. This right here is dun, dun, dun. This right here is people that are actually growing and evolving from the death. So I really like this. So this tells me here that both masculine and feminine are both evolving in a positive way. You can see this little dancer here. She's just kind of doing this little pirouette and she's very happy in this high vibration. We have the sun. So this is the light at the end of the tunnel after the death. This is a resurrection of, of dead. So I do feel like this is on the horizon here. Okay. This is on the horizon and it could be anywhere. And I'm just going to kind of give a timeline for some of you out there. It might not be for everyone, but this is Scorpio's energy. Scorpio is, is, uh, October to me. We have Saturn's energy. Saturn is, um, is Capricorn energy, right? It's Capricorn. That's related to, uh, the devil. So that right there is very much a card of the 12th month. So between 10, 11, and 12, there's a message there. 10, 11, 12. It could be October, November, December. There could be some sort of shift here. There could be some sort of completion here. There could be something that is actually taking place between masculine and feminine at that time. And we have the empress. So the empress is just kind of doing her own thing too. So I feel like that's masculine. This is feminine. So they're not necessarily facing each other at this time, but she's just focusing on herself. She's just doing her own thing. You know, this is her, but the masculine can't see her. Why can't the masculine see her? Because she's not reaching out. She's remaining the queen of wands. She's focusing on herself. She's building something behind that wall. Can't see her. You know, she, he knows she's there, but he's, she's not revealing everything to him. She's, she's just doing her own thing. And remember that queen of wands energy is very attractive to the divine masculine. And that's where the feminine I just feel needs to be just for herself in general. So anyways, you guys, I really hope that you enjoyed those messages. This reading is a 30 minute reading. So it's going to be a little bit of a shorter, more condensed, um, version of this reading. If you guys want to place your own, um, order for your own personalized version. Um, but of course with these collective readings, there's a lot of different energies. So I always like to give extra time for everyone that might be, um, you know, involved in the, uh, you know, in the situation. So anyways, I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. And I also want to say, um, when I did yesterday's reading and I asked you guys at the very end to, you know, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on notifications, put a heart, drop just a heart or an emoji in the comments. You guys just blew my socks off. I want to say thank you to everyone so much for doing that because what I actually got was a notification that my video was, was doing um, better and that the activity was creating it to um, receive more reach, um, in the, or in the, um, the algorithm. So it did help you guys. So of course I'm going to probably say it at the very end of the reading, 
you know, if you guys enjoy what you see, if you guys like my work, if you guys want to continue to tune in for, you know, a variety of different readings, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on those notifications, and um, also just drop something, whether it's a comment or a heart or whatever inside the comments, because it definitely helps my videos and it helps my channel to grow. So I just want to say thank you to everyone for your love, your kindness, and your support. And um, I'll catch you guys for the next reading, possibly tomorrow or the next day. All right, take care. Bye-bye.